Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing very well and here in this session we are going to discuss most important MCQs of machine learning under the concept of regression techniques. So regression techniques top MCQs we are going to discuss today and we have already discussed the basic concept of machine learning MCQs and uh, classification techniques MCQs before this video. So you may also watch them. The link is already there in the description section. So please visit that and watch the previous two sessions also that are going to be work as a stepping stone for this particular session. Right now, question number one, which of the following is a primary purpose of regression analysis? So why to do regression analysis for classification purpose? Option A, option B for predicting categorical outputs or option c for predicting continuous outcomes or for option d clustering so you know that if we talk about classification then it is not related with the regression and clustering is part of unsupervised machine learning technique so a and d are incorrect now the two are remaining one so categorical outcome is basically part for classification here we are having continuous outcome that is related with regression technique thus option c is the correct answer question number two which of the following statements is true regarding regression analysis so regarding regression analysis if you will see it is used to establish a causal relationship between variables it can be used for linear relationships or it is used to understand the relationship between a dependent and one or more independent variable or it is always more accurate than classification so here if you are going to see the difference then it is always more accurate than classification is obviously incorrect it is used to establish a causal relationship between variables it can only be used for linear relationship that is also incorrect because we may have multi-linear relationship as well it is used to understand relationship between a dependent and one or more independent variable that is more correct right so option c is the correct one for example if you want to figure out the price of house with respect to area and more independent variable can be there like location of the house right furnished or semi-furnished and different different independent variable may have so option c is most suitable Question number three, in a simple linear regression, the equation for the line of best fit is usually written as, you know, best fit line we represent as y equal to b0 plus b1x, right? It is just like y equal to mx plus c. So b is going to work as a slope, right? And b0 is going to work as a intercept. So option A is the correct answer here. But y equal to b0 plus b1x, normally we return it like this. Question number 4. The goal of gradient descent in linear regression is to, what is the role of gradient descent algorithm? You know we use gradient descent algorithm in linear regression for minimizing the error which is adjusting by model's parameter, right? We adjust model's parameter and minimize, try to minimize the error. So option A is the correct answer here. Now question number 5. If you are going to see question number 5. Then which of the following. Which of the following is an advantage of using the normal equation over gradient descent for linear regression. Right. So if you will see it works faster for larger data set. No. It does not require feature scaling. Yes. Basically, advantage of using normal equation over gradient descent is that it does not require feature scaling. So, option B is going to be correct answer for question number 5. Question number 6. What is the main drawback of using gradient descent algorithm in regression models? It is more computationally intensive for large data set. It is not like so. It can be used with non-linear relationship. It may get stuck in local minima or it is highly sensitive to data scaling. The main drawback of gradient descent with uh, 
in regression model is sensitivity towards data scaling option d is most the correct one question number 7 in multiple linear regression how many predictors can we have multiple linear regression so it is by default multiple so no limit unlimited right question number 8 when the dependent variable is influenced by two or more independent variable which type of regression should be used so two or more by two or more so multiple linear regression two or more so multiple linear regression option c is the correct one question number nine which assumption is not required for multiple linear regression so not required they are asking right linearity multi collinearity independence of residuals or homoscedasticity right so if you will see here linearity multi collinearity or homoscedasticity is normally required but independence of residual okay not required right multi collinearity will not be required linearity will be required independence of residuals will be required homo scedasticity will be required but multi collinearity is not required so it seems option b is the correct word question number 10 non linear regression is used when when we are going to use non linear regression when the relationship between variable is not linear obviously by default we can go with a right question number 11 which of the following is an example of non linear regression okay let's see polynomial regression logistic regression ridge regression lasso regression so which of the following is an example which of the following is an example of non linear so polynomial regression itself is a non linear because by default the degree will be in the polynomial form now so it would be non linear obviously right so option a itself is correct Question number 12. Which regularization technique adds a penalty which is equal to the absolute value of magnitude of coefficient? It is absolute value of magnitude that is lesso regression. By default in the formula itself we add penalty equal to absolute value of magnitude of coefficient that is lesso regression. Question number 13. In the ridge regression the regularization term is in the ridge regression l1 norm of the coefficient or l2 norm of the coefficient or mean of the coefficient or median of the coefficient so ridge regression means l2 and if we talk about the lesso regression lesso is l1 lesso is l1 ridge regression is l2 right so here ridge regression so it is l2 norm of coefficient right question number 14 we, uh, when a model performs well on a training data but poorly on testing data this is example of by default no overfitting in training it is performing very good but when it comes to testing part it perform very very poorly so option b is the correct one overfitting right question number 15 which of the following techniques can help reduce overfitting in regression models how to reduce overfitting by increasing the number of features no by removing regularization no by adding regularization yes by reducing the size of training data no regularization by default is used to reduce normally the overfitting kind of thing right so c is the correct answer for question number 15 question number 16 which technique is commonly used to tune hyperparameters in regression models? So, for tuning hyperparameters in regression model, we use cross validation techniques. Normally, we use cross validation techniques for tuning hyperparameter tuning for regression models, right? Option A is the correct one. Question number 17 which of the following is not considered a hyperparameter in linear regression model so in linear regression model which is not a hyperparameter learning rate so learning rate is a hyperparameter 
that is alpha number of iterations in gradient descent it is also one of the parameter intercept term here yeah, intercept is not any parameter intercept is not parameter and regularization is a parameter so option c is the correct answer as they have was not considered as a hyperparameter in intercept term is not hyperparameter in linear regression question number 18 now uh, what does mean absolute error mae major in a regression model so in a regression model what does mae mean the average of the square differences between predicted and actual the average of absolute differences between predicted and actual or the square root of uh, sum of squared error or the variance of residual so c and d are absolutely correct mean absolute a by default stands for absolute the average of absolute difference between predicted and actual so option b will be the correct question number 19 what is difference between mean squared error and root mean squared error so basically the formula itself is root mean squared is under root of msc so you can answer it now msc is the square root of rmac no rmac is the square of no rma rmac is square root of msc c is the correct answer this is the formula right question number 20 which evaluation metric indicates the proportion of the variance in the dependent variable that is predicted from independent variable proportion of variance or in the in, de in the dependent variable that is predicted from independent that is r squared r squared because by default mae msc and rmac is the term which is related with MA in MAC will be related with absolute and average difference between actual and uh, predicted. R squared error is the proportion of variance in the dependent variable that is predictable from independent C option, right? Yes. So, guys, in this video, we have discussed 20 questions. Next video, we are going to cover questions on unsupervised learning. Please do stay tuned, subscribe the channel, and like the videos and connect with us on different different social media platforms as well. Ask your queries in the comment section. Thank you so much. Have a very nice day guys. Jai Hind. Jai Bharat.